Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to give a short update on ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19. As I've mentioned in other videos, ivermectin is an antiparasitic that's been used safely for the elimination of intestinal parasites and scabies for a long time. And because it takes so long to develop new medications, there's been a lot of interest in using medications that have already been approved for other uses, such as the treatment or prophylaxis of COVID-19. I want to specifically state that I'm not recommending the use of ivermectin for either the treatment or prophylaxis of COVID-19 at this time, but I am simply restating data that has been shared by researchers. I will continue to say that no matter how well ivermectin may work in both the treatment or prevention of COVID-19, I will always recommend getting the COVID-19 vaccine and believe the safety and efficacy data is excellent to support the vaccines that are currently available. Okay, now on to the update. There are two items that I want to mention. The first is a meta-analysis of 24 randomized controlled trials involving over 3,400 participants that was recently published in the American Journal of Therapeutics online on June 17th. This meta-analysis is based on 16 trials with mild to moderate COVID-19 patients, six trials with severe COVID-19 patients, and three trials with over 700 participants that were evaluated in the prophylaxis trial. Remember that prophylaxis means using ivermectin to prevent a COVID-19 infection. And what I thought was interesting is that they identified 39 studies that are still ongoing, but not included in their analysis. Wow, I think this shows the growing interest in ivermectin for both the prevention and treatment of COVID-19. The reason I like this meta-analysis is that they specifically addressed a commentary from the end of April in the British Medical Journal that was titled, quote, Misleading Clinical Evidence and Systemic Reviews on Ivermectin for COVID-19, in which the authors complain that the rapidity in which some articles are being published online has precluded the usual peer scrutiny, evaluations, and usual stringent requirements for effective scientific study. I completely agree. Some of the studies that have been published online are woefully underpowered without enough participants, botched randomization and endpoints that are changed mid-study. Prior to the era of COVID-19, these studies would not have even seen the light of day. But I don't agree that every study, even with its flaws, should be discounted. Despite some limitations, you can still see trends in the data, especially if you find studies that are done well enough specifically trials that use placebos and are randomized. So this particular meta-analysis was very upfront about the biases that were seen in particular studies and the heterogeneity in the studies as well. The studies used different doses of ivermectin from a one-time dose of 12 milligrams to dosing based on weight to a daily dose of five days. They used studies that gave ivermectin to people with severe cases of COVID-19 as well as studies that gave ivermectin to prevent COVID-19. Overall, I'm going to focus on the strongest result from their evaluation of these studies. And this focuses on the 15 trials with over 2,400 participants that used ivermectin to reduce the risk of death. Because in my opinion, this is certainly a straightforward endpoint and one that is of the utmost importance. And based on moderate certainty evidence, this was their nod to the fact that these studies had some issues with bias. They found that ivermectin reduced the risk of death by an average of 62% compared with no ivermectin treatment. The numbers were small, 2.3% died while using ivermectin, while 7.8% died who did not use ivermectin. But the trend is there. Other studies they looked at had low certainty evidence, but still found that were trends that ivermectin prophylaxis reduced COVID-19 infection and tended to improve patient symptoms with COVID-19. And soon after this meta-analysis was published, the University of Oxford, a highly regarded scientific institution, has announced that they will be studying ivermectin in a trial called PRINCIPAL. In this trial, they will use ivermectin in non-hospitalized but high-risk patients to see if using ivermectin can speed recovery, reduce the severity of symptoms, and prevent the need for hospitalization. 
From the study website, they say, quote, Participants enrolled in the study will be randomly assigned to receive a three-day course of oral ivermectin treatment. They will be followed for up to 28 days and will be compared with participants who have been assigned to receive the usual standard of care only. People aged 18 to 64 with certain underlying health conditions or shortness of breath from COVID-19 or over 65 are eligible to join the trial within the first 14 days of experiencing COVID-19 symptoms or after receiving a positive test. People with severe liver disease or who are on the blood thinning medication warfarin or taking other treatments known to interact with ivermectin will be excluded. And the good news is that the trial can be joined easily from anywhere in the United Kingdom. If you live in the UK and think you may qualify, go to principaltrial.org for more information about how to sign up. So far, Principal has looked at six different therapies for the early treatment of COVID-19. Ivermectin is now its seventh, and it's enrolled over 5,000 people. Personally, I cannot wait for these results. I hope this will further add credibility to the data and trends that we've already seen. Thank you for joining me.